capture's working. Capture? Yeah, I'm recording. Oh. Well, that means my voice is gonna come out in capture. That's fine. <coughs> Hopefully we don't do anything stupid, and then I'm gonna be in your dumb video with my dumb voice. <laughs> So the Master Chief Collection finally came out on Steam and the Xbox Game Pass for PC. Now millions of people have already bought and or downloaded Halo Reach. If you didn't play this game back in the day, you were a nobody. Everybody and their mother played Halo. I'm not joking. My own mom reached Lieutenant in Halo 3. My dad played SWAT religiously for months until he was a headshot king. This is the first game series that ever caused me to rage quit online back before I was even a teenager. This is the game. It's here. On PC. After El Dorito got shut down, they brought that team in to work with the big dogs and released the real shit officially for everyone. So let's talk about how Halo Reach has aged a bit since 2011. I mean, this is almost a decade of gaming history we've gone through since this game came out, so how well could it have carried over? Let's just bullet point this and get it out of the way. You have some issues with voice acting of the yesteryear not being great. The recording equipment they had at the time is probably only as good as what I have right now, just doing this for a hobby. Mayday, 3 Charlie 6, does anyone read? You were attacked by Covenant forces, the Covenant is on reach. On the more modern side of things, you have this battle pass unlock system that just seems poorly made and tacked on. Can't tell if they're genuinely adding more things to reach over time, or if this is just a badly made replacement for the even worse credit system. And yeah, you heard me right. I think the credit system of Halo Reach was garbage. I played over 350 hours of the original Reach, and never made it to the cap rank. An inheritor was way beyond me. I played maybe 70 hours of this and gotten almost everything so far. I can't help but compare the two and say I'm happier now than I was then. While we're talking about how poorly conveyed things are though, I want to mention that the menus of OG Reach were beautiful. It came with some of the best lobby design and backdrops in video game history. I've seen a bunch of mods already for at least bringing this back. People are now so skilled at pinpoint precision headshots that all the nerfs to assault rifles over the years really, really tanks its value and reach. This thing is basically worthless. DMR is almost the same tier as the sniper rifle. This turns almost every game into a huge DMR only match, which is immensely troubling as most of the matches of DMRs is the starting weapon. I remember this problem somewhat existing back in the day, but it wasn't as prevalent as this. It was some people being stupidly good at it. I've got some personal taste things that I would change if I was in the development team for Reach, but honestly the air of criticism for this design has come and gone, I think. So what does all this mean? Halo Reach has aged spectacularly. It's got the magic and it's got it in force. I remember as a child having a grudge on Halo for it not being realistic enough, not being a slow-paced tactical shooter, and now that I'm an adult, I can say fuck that noise and enjoy it for what it is. Nothing will be better than that golden age of Capture the Flag and King of the Hill for many, many people. It's exactly this kind of gameplay that Bungie has completely abandoned in Destiny, which is saddening to me because Destiny had the potential to be the best game ever. Now it's sitting firmly in the best free-to-play game of this year bin with the rest of the loser MMOs and time sinks that no one wants to get started. Anyone who gets suckered into it ends up wasting weeks at a time doing menial tasks for the sakes of just getting them done. Personally, I think Final Fantasy XIV is the better MMO here, just saying. And over here in the Halo corner, you have games that last anywhere from three to eight minutes and ask nothing from you in terms of commitment. It's not taxing, it's just thrilling. Going back to Halo is going back to a time when video games were fun because that's all they wanted to accomplish. Before they threw a season pass at a microtransaction at you every time you boot into a main menu or turn on your phone. And while the Master Chief collection still has dregs of the shit show that is the modern era, you can completely ignore it and still have a good time, circa when phones were used primarily for texting your high school girlfriend at 2am between your 30 second long lives. You can play a game or two of Reach before you have to go to work, play a game before you go to bed, play a game while you wait for your kids to get ready for school, and play a quick match of Halo before most people will even notice. I do want to take some time to talk about some negatives. This is mostly heavy in the sound department. I know not everyone has this issue, because out of 10 or 12 of my friends that have played this game with me, only one other person has reported this issue, and I've apparently got the worst of it. But listen how crunchy this audio is. Is the audio getting all, like, crunchy fucking with you guys? Yeah, crunchy. Crunchy? No. I know. Dion has been complaining about that for many days now. It's really bad. 
it seems to get worse the higher up on a map I am. So some Forge World maps are unbearable to play on. I have the hope this gets patched or that I personally find a fix for it somehow, but I don't know. I've had a couple crashes too, but they've been so few and far between and haven't really affected a whole lot. Just reboot the game and it's fine. Now the really annoying bit is that for a few days after getting to it, I had the worst time finding a match. Like 10 minute waits, idle timers booting us from matchmaking. It just got worse and worse the more people we had in a party at the same time. Now this did go away, but it was pretty terrible at the time. It really reminded me of how long it would actually take to find a match back in the day, and how happy I am to never have to deal with anything like League Q time circa 2012 ever again. I also want to talk about controls, sorta, as the ending note to my video, because now at the end of the 2010s, when we are again playing both Halo and Modern Warfare, we have to again start up the argument of mal and keyboard versus controller. I have to take this opportunity to go on the record. If you can't shoot with a controller and a mouse and keyboard equally, then you just aren't good at one or the other. Halo gives you the holy grail of options for this. Dead zones, acceleration, etc, etc, etc. It goes so far into making sure you have precision controller settings, but I've seen people complaining that controller players shouldn't have any aim assist. And as someone who prefers playing on controller, I agree, but it's because I hate aim assist. It's not unfair or anything, really. I just hate my aim going off to wherever the hell it pleases when I'm trying to do something else in close quarters. That's why I play Reach on mouse and keyboard. This sounds like a super backwards argument, but I'm trying to say if it isn't really a matter of what's a better medium for playing something, it's more a matter of how much support you get in the settings for something like this. Should I have made a separate video for this discussion? Probably. Most definitely, yes. But it's too late. So man, Halo Reach, right? If you didn't get banned for AFKing and Griftball for armor unlocks for 30 days, you should all go play some more of this. Like, right now. Go play Halo Reach. Whoa! I'm the king of oddball! Now I want to take a moment to say thank you to my editor for editing this video. Hi Ryan. Say hello to the fans. There's like 10 of them. Hello. And I want to say thank you to the few people who are watching this. Uh, I know I'm not very popular at the moment, but I do appreciate every view I get, every new subscriber that I get. I love you all so much. Uh, have a good one.